Hello and welcome again to our UC Berkeley virtual visit. My name is Morgan and I'm going to be the moderator for today's presentation. I am a junior double majoring in history and political science from Modesto, California in the Central Valley and I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. We are so thankful that you are all here joining us today because we know that everyone is going through a lot of challenges right now and no matter where you are in the world, we are grateful that you've chosen to spend this hour with us. So we're gonna be moving on to some housekeeping before we get into our tour in earnest. Today's presentation is gonna be an hour in total, 45 minutes of which are going to be a PowerPoint. The chat function has been disabled, but the Q&A function is open and ready to receive all of your questions. So please ask away. We have a slew of campus ambassadors on the back end, ready and excited to answer them. There are gonna be several polls popping up on your screen throughout this presentation, so please go ahead and answer them. And this will be recorded, but a different version is gonna be available on our website as well as our YouTube channel if you'd like to come back and review the information. This is gonna be a campus overview, mainly from the student perspective, talking about campus culture and life. So there's gonna be no specific information about admissions or financial aid, but if you'd like to find that, you can go ahead and uh, sign up for a separate admissions presentation on their website. And as I mentioned, we will be ending with a live Q&A, hence the Q&A function. So we'll be answering your questions live. So please ask away and we'll try to answer all that we can. So with all that being said, we're gonna be moving on to introducing our two presenters for today. Thank you, Morgan, for that introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Jade, and I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm originally from Long Island, New York, to be specific, Great Neck, but currently I'm in my Berkeley apartment, so as you can imagine, I'm really appreciating the California weather here. I am a junior, and I spent the last two years at Cal studying psychology as well as economics. Outside of class, I'm a part of our Women's Ultimate Frisbee team, where we play other schools in and out of the state, so we got to go to Chico's, Santa Clara, Santa Cruz, and even LA for our tournaments. And I got to explore all those parts of California with my team, which was a very exciting adventure for me as an out-of-state student. In freshman year, I was involved in psychology research through the student organization called ULAB. I was in a group with five other undergraduate students, and we were able to design our own research project. Lastly, I'm a part of a club called Business Review at Berkeley, or as we like to call ourselves, BRB, where we write about investigative pieces, um, just about the business related topics that are relevant to us in the Berkeley area. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Sydney. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be one of your virtual tour guides today. My name is Sydney and I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. I'm originally from Marin County, California, which is just about 30 minutes from Berkeley. But uh, just like Jade right now, I'm also staying in Berkeley. Uh, so excited to be here. I'm a sophomore this year and I'm majoring in political science and double minoring in public policy and journalism. And I'm also involved in a few things here on campus. So I'm a part of the Surfrider Foundation, which is an environmental action club. I'm also a part of the SAGE mentorship program where I tutor local elementary students in the area. I also recently just started a Jewish magazine called As Written. So I'll be the co-editor in chief of that this year. And I'm really excited to start that. And I'm also a member of Greek Life. If you have any questions about that organization or anything in general, please feel free to use the chat function because we are so excited to answer any and all of your questions. So to get started with our tour today, we just wanted to welcome you guys to UC Berkeley and thank you so much for your flexibility in joining us virtually. Uh, here on the slide, we have a few images and videos just to kind of kickstart our presentation. Right there in the middle is our lovely Sather Tower, or we call it the Campanile. And the Campanile is actually the third tallest clock and bell tower in the entire world, and the tallest bell tower in the United States. So you can see it from basically all places on campus, um, just like you can see in the top right. There's some students enjoying Memorial Glade, which is kind of a hub for student life on campus, a really nice place to chill or throw a frisbee. Um, and this year, we're also so excited to announce that it is our 100 
150th anniversary of accepting women to our university. And we started accepting women just two years after our university's founding, which really just speaks to our history as a progressive and inclusive institution. And up there on the top left, you can also just see an aerial drone footage video of our campus, uh, just highlighting the place that we call home. So now just to go into an agenda of what we're going to be talking about today, um, we're going to go over some key topics, starting with an overview of Berkeley, looking at academics, housing and dining, health and safety. We're also going to be talking about some student resources and student life on campus, and finally finishing up by talking about athletics and our libraries and research, and also remote learning in the time of COVID. Okay, let's dive right in with some university history. So in 1862, President Lincoln signed the Morrill Land Grant Act, which created many land grant college across the entire country. And our school was one of those colleges. So UC Berkeley was founded in 1868, and we were the first University of California, hence the name Cal. So maybe you've heard us being referred to by different names, such as UC Berkeley, Cal, University of California, and all of those names are all referring to our school. Our mascot is the golden bear. We have a total of 27 bear statues scattered all around campus. So if you're ever in Berkeley for a visit, you can walk around and see how many bears you can find. And our mascot, we also have Oski, which is a he shows up at sports games and you can see him around. He's also a bear. In terms of campus size, we have about 31,000 undergraduate students and about 12,000 graduate students. So that is a pretty big school, which is actually one of the things I really like about Berkeley because with a bigger school, it is easier to find people with similar interests. And I always love meeting new people here. Our campus is full of historical landmarks. South Hall on the top left hand corner is the oldest building on campus, which is built actually in 1873 and is still being used today for our Graduate School of Information. The Campanile, like Sydney has just mentioned, celebrated its 100th birthday just a few years ago. And then we also have Sprawl Hall as well as Sather Gate here on the bottom pictures and both of those places have witnessed the beginning of free speech movement. So now here's just a few more photos to really showcase our campus. Um, just had Jade had mentioned in the past slide, there's Sather Gate on the left. And if you've ever seen the movie Monsters University, um, they actually use Sather Gate as an example for something in their movie. And you can actually see a lot of places around Berkeley um, being modeled in that movie. And right in the middle, we have Sturdy the Bear, and he's located right below our Memorial Stadium. And we actually have 22 bear statues on campus. Some are super big like sturdy and you can actually go in his arms and give him a hug or we have a lot smaller ones so it's kind of a competition to see who can find the most bears around campus. Um, up there on the top left are our seals and we have three of these seals located around our memorial glade and not only were these seals made to commemorate the students who fought in World War II um, but there's also a little bit of suspicion surrounding these seals so it is rumored that if you step on them um, you won't actually graduate Berkeley with a 4.0 GPA so even in the most busiest of times during passing periods you will see students literally parting these seals like the Red Sea and it's really funny to watch the freshmen and kind of have no idea what they're doing and eventually just kind of have to figure it out. Um, up there on the bottom is Oski, who Jade mentioned earlier, is our campus mascot. I think he's pretty cute, but there's kind of a campus-wide debate on whether he's cute or creepy, um, but I guess that's up to you to decide. Uh, but you can see him basically anywhere around campus, and he's always just a very friendly face. And we also have a poll popping up just asking, who are you? We would love to know who's joining us today. So feel free to fill that out. Great. And as we mentioned before, we have over 150 years of campus history and we built our own unique campus culture. So one important identity for us here at Berkeley is that we're change makers. We're not only passionate about our interested fields, we're also very aware of the impacts that we can make on the entire world. So a great example of this, like I mentioned before, is the free speech movement back in 1964. So in, during the civil rights movement, Berkeley administration did not allow students to talk about political topics on campus 
but Berkeley students really wanted to make their impact and make their voice heard. So they organized protests on campus and that inspired many other college campus around the country to do the same thing. And we continue to promote that leadership today. So Berkeley is full of leaders that are not afraid of challenging the status quo. And we really work to make those innovations. There's a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurship here at Berkeley. I know a lot of people from my clubs that are actually working on their own startup company as just undergraduates in college. And we also um, have innovation in the form of research and advancements in science. So the community here at Berkeley is passionate and we really care about social justice here. We also take a lot of pride in our campus identity and we have, we're very big on school spirit. Um, and I, my high school, back in my high school, we were not really big on school spirit and Berkeley is kind of the opposite of that. So people take a lot of pride and then we, we can say go bears to cheer each other on because like I've said before, the bear is kind of our mascot. And uh, I remember one time I was traveling in San Diego with my roommates and then we saw these people wearing cow shirts and we just thought, what well, if we shot go bears at them and we shot a go bears and we immediately got a go bears back. And for me, that really made me feel like that the Berkeley community extends off the campus and into the rest of the world. And the community is so much bigger than just the physical campus here at Berkeley. So in addition, Berkeley is also incredibly diverse and we want to support everyone to make their positive impact on the world. And we try to give back to our community through our public services. I just really wanted to echo what Jade said. Basically, anytime I travel somewhere, um, even if it's like in Yosemite or sometimes outside the United States, if you ever see somebody with a Berkeley hat or a Berkeley shirt, if you say go bears, they are guaranteed to say it back. Um, so here's just a few more photos to really showcase our campus life. Up there in the top left, you can see a protest going on. And I know a lot of students on our campus do choose to get involved in political activism. And it's not a requisite for our students, of course, but if you are passionate about social justice or getting involved in protests, um, Berkeley definitely has a space for you to do that. Um, down there in the bottom left is one of our Friday day rallies. Um, we have our amazing Cal dance and cheer team uh, performing in front of the Cal band. And in the middle photos, just showcase some of the research that goes on around our campus. Berkeley is really a school on the forefront a lot of on, for a lot of innovation and research. And it's really incredible to be able to not only participate in some of these research programs, um, but also just to see the world kind of changing around you right in front of your eyes. Um, and there on the top right is just our Cal Rally team in front of OSCE, um, or our rally committee is one of the most committed and spirited groups on campus. And it's always fun to uh, see them around and say go bears to them, definitely. Um, and down there on the top or on the bottom, right is uh, the celebration of a hundred and a uh, hundred years of Berkeley um, or 150 years of Berkeley sorry um, and so that's just two students doing some acrobatics off of our Campanile like we mentioned before awesome and now we have some updates about our significant global impact today so we're quickly adjusting to the online education and working to provide an access for a bigger student population so here at berkeley we're dedicated to educational justice so just that just means we want to make sure all students have access to technology and internet especially with this online learning environment now our student technology program can provide students with a free laptop and internet if those are necessary. Berkeley also have these youth programs for the children in our city community and we're continuing those in an online format so that these young children in the area do not lose the opportunity because of this pandemic. And speaking of COVID, Berkeley is involved in a lot of COVID research and contributing to finding a recovery for this virus in many ways. We're doing trial testing in our labs and we're also analyzing the biological, cultural, and economic impact of COVID. I think this just goes to show how Berkeley scholars like to think about the situation from different perspectives. 
So we recognize that COVID does not only have a biological impact on people. When we analyze the impact of the virus and planning for this recovery, we have to consider the, we have to take consideration of these cultural contexts and economic status of different groups. In terms of advocacy and social justice, Berkeley take human rights and anti-racism very seriously. In our human rights lab right now on campus, we're conducting research on trauma, resilience, and burnout to, and just trying to figure out the most effective and sustainable way to uh, continue our fight. Thanks so much, Jade. And now we're going to transition into talking about our academics and going into our five undergraduate colleges. And a poll should have just popped up for you asking about what you're interested in. And go ahead and fill that out just so we can cater the presentation towards you as much as possible. So we have five undergraduate colleges here at Berkeley. Uh, these are the College of Letters and Science, the Rouser College of Natural Resources, the College of Environmental Design, and finally the Colleges of Chemistry and Engineering. And we recommend that students, if they're interested in both the colleges of chemistry and engineering, apply directly to those colleges. However, it is definitely possible to transfer between these colleges. I know a lot of my friends didn't know exactly what they wanted to study coming into college. And so if you come to Berkeley and realize you want to do something completely different which, with what you previous thought, um, there's definitely the possibility for you to do that here. And we're now we're going to talk about all of the colleges individually and just provide um, a little bit more detail into them. Yeah, thank you, Cindy, for that overview. We're going first up, we're going into the College of Letters and Science. Looking at the poll results, it seems like a lot of you are interested in biological sciences, some in social sciences. Now those are going to go into our College of Letters and Science. It is my home college. I think it's Sydney's home college as well. So both psychology and economics are under this college. It is the biggest college at Berkeley and it includes about three quarter of the undergraduate population. We have five divisions here, which are arts and humanities, biological sciences, mathematical and physical sciences, social sciences, and undergraduate studies. That means the subjects offered here are very diverse and you have plenty of opportunities to explore different subjects. All incoming students at Cal for the College of Letters and Sciences actually come in as undeclared. So you can take a few introductory classes in your intended major. And if you really like the subject, you can go ahead and declare that major. Otherwise, you can easily switch into another major in this college. This was very helpful to me because when I was coming in, I was kind of interested in economics, but I wasn't sure if I liked it enough to fully commit to a major. So it worked really well that I was able to take a few introductory classes before committing. We also offer more than 80 majors in this college, so there's plenty of choices and we have a lot of minors as well. So you can basically choose any future career path that you like. And out of the 23 Nobel Prizes we have here at Berkeley, 16 of them actually come from the College of Letters and Science. Thanks so much, Jade. I'm also a member of the College of Letters and Science, but um, now we're gonna be transitioning to talk about the Rouser College of Natural Resources. And I've taken a bunch of classes in this college as well, in addition to some classes in the College of Letters and Science. And I can say that this college is incredible in its environmental focus and really broadens past just your typical environmental science, which is probably what you might think of when you think of a College of Natural Resources, but it offers a number of different fields of study such as biological sciences, nutrition, toxicology, um, ecosystem management, social sciences, and you can even take environmental economics and policy in this college. So if you're interested in that side of economics, uh, you can definitely go into that. And the college definitely has a commitment to sustainability and social justice. I'm taking a class right now um, through the Rouser College that's called Race Equity in the Environment. Um, so they're very committed to encouraging students to think beyond um, just, you know, the environment and how it intersects with race and class and all of these different things. Um, and just a little fun fact about this college, if you've ever eaten a power bar, you have literally eaten the invention um, of a student in the Rouser College of Natural Resource, which which is pretty cool as well. Yeah, I just want to add on one more thing to what Cindy said about how the Rouser College have a lot of fun classes. I personally met some 
um, personally met some forestry majors and I heard they have very cool classes where they just go on field trips. They go into these um, natural national parks and then they just collect sample there and have very hands-on learning experience. Okay, so now next we're moving on to the College of Environmental Design, which is our smallest college with about 650 students. So students in this college kind of get to have this small college experience academically, and they are also, at the same time, they're also a part of this bigger Berkeley community. We offer four majors here in the College of Environmental Design, which are architecture, landscape architecture, urban studies, and sustainable environmental design. Our our architecture program is ranked number four globally, and this building in the GIF, Worcester Hall, is the main building for the College of Environmental Design. And the highest floor in this build, the higher floors in this building are actually studio spaces for our students. One of my roommate is a student in this college, and she has her own studio workspace in Worcester Hall where she can design models. It is also a space for students to critique each other's work and make improvements to be to make better models and a statement from this college is that they aim to craft ecologically sustainable and resilient prosperous and fair healthy and beautifully built environments so i i think that worcester hall my architecture uh, major roommate told me that worcester hall is actually a perfect representation of this statement so you can see that the exterior of this building kind of has a very plain and concrete look and this thick wall thick wall is intended to serve as insulation. So it would take more energy to uh, raise or lower the internal temperature inside of the building so that the internal temperature will be more stable. We also have a separate ambassador team from this college and they reach out to underrepresented groups to let them know about this wonderful pr program that we have here in this college. Thanks, Jade. Yeah, I definitely recommend checking out Worcester Hall. If you ever get the chance to be on campus, they have one of my absolute favorite libraries to study in. So definitely a really cool space. Um, so now we're going to talk about the College of Chemistry, which is another one of our smaller undergraduate colleges. It only has about a thousand students and students can choose between three majors to study um, chemistry, chemical engineering, or chemical bio biology. Um, and our College of Chemistry is ranked number one globally, which means we have literally the best chemistry programs in the entire world, which is absolutely insane. Um, and there's also a lot of really interesting history um, through this college that has really sparked a lot of innovation and research. So our College of Chemistry professors have actually um, discovered 16 elements on the periodic table and Berkeley is was lucky enough to be named after a few of these so you might have heard of Berkelium or Californium um, unfortunately there is no Stanfordium so just keep that in mind um, also if you've ever taken a chemistry class you have probably heard of the Lewis dot structure uh, structure and that was actually invented at Berkeley by one of our professors Gilbert Lewis and now we have an entire hall named after him so he was really consequential in really shaping um, the course of chemistry and the history of that or the future of that field. So our final undergraduate college is the College of Engineering. Um, engineering is also on the smaller side, so it has just under 4,000 students. And there's 11 majors that students can choose from, so really a wide variety of disciplines within engineering. Um, and even though you do have to apply directly to engineering and take most of your classes within this college, there's also the opportunity for students to take a wide variety of classes outside of this college. So one of my friends is an engineering major, but she's taken some of classes in the College of Letters and Science with me uh, to fulfill her humanities and social sciences classes. Um, so really giving you the fuller Berkeley experience within a smaller college. And also all of our majors within the College of Engineering are ranked in the top nine globally, which is also just absolutely insane. Um, and if you're very interested in engineering or hoping to go into this college, we have a separate engineering Engineering virtual visit that will go much more in depth. Um, so you can look at our website to find out more information on that as well. Awesome. Now that we wrapped up all the undergraduate colleges, we're moving on to our nine graduate schools here at Berkeley. The Haas School of Business is a graduate school that's probably most involved with the undergraduate students. Though, so they do offer an undergraduate program which students can apply to in their second year at Berkeley. 
And if you're accepted into this program for junior and senior year, you'll be taking classes from the High School of Business. And when you graduate, you will earn a bachelor's degree for business administration from Haas. We also have a global management program, which you can apply to directly from high school. For this program, you will spend the first semester of your freshman fall in London studying abroad. And when you graduate, you will have a business degree and a concentration in global management. If you're interested in business and engineering, I recommend checking out our management, entrepreneurship and technology program or the MET program. Students in the MET program will take classes from both College of Engineering and High School of Business. And uh, when you graduate, you can graduate with two bachelor degrees from each of the colleges. Other than Haas, we have the Graduate School of Education, the School of Information, which is in the main building is South Hall on the left hand corner on the bottom, bottom right hand. Um, and I find it pretty interesting that South Hall is the oldest building on campus and it's hosting one of most modern subjects in the school, which is the School of Information. We also have Berkeley Law, the Graduate School of Social Welfare and the School of Optometry, which has an eye center that is open to students. The Graduate School of Journalism, which offers a summer journalism minor that Sydney said that she has taken. We also have the Graduate School of Public Health and Graduate School of Public Policy. So now let's talk about structure and class sizes. One of the reasons why we mentioned the graduate schools is because you would interact with the graduate students often here at Berkeley. All classes have weekly lectures, which can be big, like, um, like big lecture halls or uh, small or much smaller, like less than 10 people. For the big lectures, we also have weekly discussion sections led by a graduate student instructor or GSI, we call them here. So these sections are much smaller, usually around 20 people or so. During these weekly discussion sections, the GSI will review the topics from lecture or give you worksheets and answer any questions that you have. Before exams, they would also give you review sessions as well. I find these discussion sections to be great for meeting your classmates because you really get to work them in work with them in a closer group. And in addition, the professors and GSIs also have office hours. During office hours, they literally sit in their office and have their office open. They're not doing anything else but waiting for students to come in and ask their questions. The professors usually encourage students to come to office hours and they're very happy to discuss their research or your future career plans with you. Ever since we switched to online classes, the professors and GSIs continue to have office hours through Zoom and they're very flexible with the scheduling. So if you can't make their regular hours, they're very happy to schedule a different time that works for both of you. We have a pretty de decent size of, we have pretty decent class size and we have a student to faculty ratio of 18 to one here. Actually, 85% of our classes are fewer than 50 students, and there's plenty of hands-on lab and studio classes. As incoming freshmen, your introductory classes are probably going to be on the bigger side, but those classes do get way smaller as you move to the upper division classes. And even as a freshman, I had a very small writing classes with about 20 people my first semester here. And in terms of resources, we have a great learning resource called the Student Learning Center, which provides free tutoring services. And with the open campus, the Student Learning Center would have drop-in tutor sessions where you can just stop by, ask your questions about your homework and get those questions answered. To accommodate for online learning, we also move those resources online. So last semester, I had I attended a few review sessions or tutor sessions through online Student Learning Center. And then we also have individual advising. If you have questions about choosing classes, changing majors, graduating early, all of those questions you can get advice for. And we also move that resource online as well. That's it for our academics. If you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the Q&A function. Thanks so much, Jade. And I just really wanted to echo the importance of going to office hours. Even at a really big school like Berkeley, it's definitely possible to get really close to professors, but it's really up to you to go out and seek out those resources um, and build those relationships yourself. I was able to get really close to one of my professors and they not only help you with academic and career advice, but they can also help you um, in other personal ways, which is really great. 
Um, and even though Jay did an amazing job talking about all of our academics, unfortunately this semester we, um, due to COVID, a lot of our academics have transitioned online. So we are currently deploying a fully remote learning option for our students. And this is through Zoom, um, but Zoom Pro is free for all our students. And we are expecting to have a remote semester, but we are hoping to implement some hybridization um, that is in line with CDC guidelines. And our instruction is both synchronous and asynchronous. So this means that you can attend some of your lectures in real time. Um, some of your professors will hold them live over Zoom, um, or some of your classes might be pre-recorded or posted at different times to accommodate for students in different time zones and everything like that. And even though our semester is pretty much virtual, our teachers and professors have done such an amazing job at being so accommodating to students in everything that they may need, you know, accommodating for their personal environments or maybe um, in access to uh, good Wi-Fi. So we have lots of services and resources for students like virtual drop-in tutoring. Um, Jade mentioned we have the Student Learning Center and all of their services are free to students. So you can access those online. Um, we also have instructional resilience so a lot of our classes were built to accommodate for remote learning um, so this means they're doing a semester in the cloud program and even though Every, I think all of our students would rather be in an in-person environment. I've really enjoyed Zoom so far, and I think our teachers have done a great job at still being able to facilitate um, the same, time, same type of conversation and learning that we would have in person. Great, and now let's move on to our housing and dining. You should see the, our last poll popping up on your screen asking where you're joining us from today. Please take a moment and fill that out for us. We have quite a few housing options here at Berkeley. We have units one, two, and three, which are high rise residential towers with singles, doubles, and triples. Now that has changed due to the COVID um, situation, which we'll mention later. In my freshman year, I lived in unit two with, and we had studying lounges. We had a laundry room, a kitchen, and the common area with a pool table in our building too. The Clark Kerr campus is a little further from the Clark Kerr dorm is a little further from the campus. It takes about seven to eight minutes to walk from campus to Clark Kerr. But many people like Clark Kerr because it is bigger and quieter. They have a very beautiful garden and it's right next to our Golden Bear Recreation Center, which has a pool that is open to all students. Next, we have Blackwell Hall, which is our newest dorm and it is one of the most popular choices. It's only one block away from campus. All of those dorms I mentioned before are on the south side of campus. We also have two dorms that are on the north side of campus. So Foothill is a sweet style dorm and Stern is, our, is for our female identifying students only. And looking at the pool results today, it looks like that many of you are from Southern California, some from Northern California, and some joining us from different parts of, the, of America and the world. So welcome and hope you're enjoying our virtual visit so far today. Okay, so when you apply to housing, the first year students do get priority. As long as on the housing application, you choose any room and any location as your last preference. So they will ask you to rank your housing preference and make sure that your last choice is what we said. And in that case, you will get priority. And we know that transitioning between high school and college can be difficult. So that's why we have residential, residential assistance or RA that lives in freshman dorm building and usually on your floor if you need help at any time. And we also have theme programs. You can choose to apply to these theme programs, which are living learning communities in the dorm that are based on salient identities or interests. For example, we have our African American theme program, Asian American Pacific Islander theme program, which are based on identity. And we also have global environment theme house, women in STEM for interest-based groups. We have security measures in the dorm to prevent non-residents from entering. And also in the dorms, as I mentioned before, we have common areas where you can hang out with friends. And uh, next to each dorms, we also have dining halls. They are buffet style, so you can swipe your ID card and just take whatever you need. The meal plan is included as a part of the housing plan, and you can choose to upgrade the meal plan to get unlimited swipes. 
The meal plan also comes with flex dollar, which you can spend at our on-campus stores and coffee shops. Some updates about housing during COVID, we get priority, we give priority based on self-selected needs. For example, students who do not necessarily have a great learning environment back at home, we would prioritize housing for them. And for incoming freshmen this fall, we have reduced room capacity to single occupancy to enforce the social distancing policies. And we ask students to put on face masks when they are in public areas. We have free testing when they come to campus and we do ask students to quarantine upon arrival. And in terms of dining, we close the dining halls so students can get to-go meals instead. We understand that at this difficult time, although students have to be physically distanced, we still want to provide them with a lot of resources to build connections and to adjust to the environment. We still have the residential assistants, which live in the dorm buildings, that's going to help students adjust, answer any questions. We have these social pots and chats to make sure that students can still communicate to their neighbors, even though they're kind of in a more isolated way of housing. And then I will briefly just go over housing for transfer and continuing students. There are many, many options. So if you choose to stick with on-campus housing, you can apply for housing again with our housing application. And this time around, you have a little more choices. You can choose our Martinez Commons, which is a very nice dorm for a sophomore and upperclassmen. And there's a few other on-campus options like Interna International House, which is open to both international and students from the US. Um, there are other affiliated properties listed as well. Many upperclassmen choose to move to an off-campus apartment, which is what I'm doing right now. I rented an apartment with my freshman year roommates. Actually, we stick together and it has been very fun to be living independently. There are also co-op housing options, which are cheaper because you take turns to do chores for the house, such as cooking, cooking dinner, or doing dishes. Also, if you, you're in the fraternity or sorority, you can explore their Greek housing options as well. Regardless of your housing plan, you can always purchase the meal plan that I have mentioned before and eat in our dining halls. Thanks so much, Jade. Um, so now we're gonna be transitioning to talking about some health and safety services on campus. Um, we obviously recognize that college can be a kind of a stressful transition for some students, but luckily Berkeley provides such a myriad of resources for its students to be um, happy in both uh, mental health and physical health. So some of the resources we have on campus are our Tang Center, um, which is in the bottom right photo. And Tang operates like your regular doctor's office, but it also has offers all type of services such as urgent care, primary care, and physical therapy. Um, and one of my favorite parts about Tang is that it has a path to care center. And this is just a center for survivors of sexual assault to go in and find resources and rights and anything they may need to help them. And it's also a place that um, tries to prevent sexual assault on our campus as well. And this is unique to UC Berkeley. So um, it's a really great service that we have for our students. And recently we also expanded to offer COVID testing for all of our students. I participated in the Safe Campus Study this past summer. Uh, so Berkeley was continually testing students um, just to track the increased rates of COVID or to see you know, contact tracing. Um, and I actually got $100 just through participating in that study, which was awesome. Um, and also I forgot to mention all of our services at Tang are available to students regardless of insurance program. However, Berkeley does enroll all of its students on their student health insurance program or SHIP upon entering, but it's definitely possible to opt out of these, um, to opt out of this service. Uh, that's what I did, and I'm still able to go and get services at Tang with a copay as little as $10, which is really great. We also offer a number of psychological counseling services, and I know a number of those have transitioned online, so you're able to speak with a therapist um, if that's something that you may need. And besides that, we also have a number of other stress relief clubs and activities on campus. I know one of my hardest parts about leaving home to college was leaving behind my adorable puppy, um, but luckily we have an entire club on campus called De-Stress with Dogs, and they're dedicated to just bringing dogs on campus and students can pet them in between classes or before midterm if you are stressed. And we also have another activity called Llama Palooza. Um, and this is where the school brings 
Texas llamas all the way from Sonoma to our campus um, in the week before finals. And just like that girl in the top right, you can go up and take a selfie with this llama. Um, if you're a little bit scared of big animals like me, you can admire them from a distance. But I really recommend checking um, out all these activities that we have for our students. Uh, so now we're also just going to talk about some campus safety services and Berkeley is an urban area so it's really important to just be aware of your surroundings at all times but luckily Berkeley does offer a number of safety services in case you do ever feel unsafe. Um, so we partner with the UC Police Department and they actually set up over 100 blue light poles on our campus which is pictured in the bottom left and so you can press the button on the screen or in that photo um, and within 90 to 120 seconds someone from the UCPD will be at your uh, place or at your location and ready to help you with whatever you may need. Um, and we also have a system called Warn Me, which is a phone alert system. So if there's, you know, a fire hydrant went off in the area or something else happened, they will alert you on your phone just to say, hey, stay away from this area for this time, um, which has actually been super helpful for even things like traffic or power outages. Um, and like Jade mentioned earlier, we also have a three point security system in our residence halls. Uh, so just to ensure that all of our students are very safe in their dorms and there's no problems um, relating to our residence halls. And we also have a number of night safety services. So if you're ever studying on campus late at night in one of our libraries, I've definitely had a few of those late nights. Um, you can take the night safety shuttle back to your dorm and these operate until I believe 3 a.m. So they're a really great service to use. Um, but if you prefer to walk um, and would want to be accompanied by somebody, we also have a system called Bear Walk. And so this is a group of trained and radio equipped students who will arrive at your location and walk you to wherever you may need. And I've heard, I've heard that they're super nice and it's a really great way to meet a friend. Um, and I personally have never felt unsafe on Berkeley's campus, but I do feel really fortunate that we have all these safety services if anything did come up. Awesome. Thank you, Sydney, for telling us about all the health and safety services we have at Berkeley. So in addition to students' health and safety, we also have student resources to protect everyone's identity and support our diversity here. We have the Center for Education, Edu Educational Justice and the ASUC, or the Associated Students of University of California, to support equal educational opportunities for all students. We have offices specifically for transfer students, non-documented students, and veterans, student parents, or disabled students to provide them with, their nest, with the help that they need. Our Basic Needs Center is a great resource, resource for students who struggle with food. We physically cannot list all of the great resources we have here at Berkeley just on one PowerPoint slide. So here are just some examples. And from my personal experience, any resource I ever wanted at Berkeley, I was able to find the appropriate resource with just some little research. Thanks, Jade. I definitely agree with that. Um, so now we're just going to talk about student life at Berkeley and what it's like to really be a golden bear. Uh, we actually have over a thousand registered student clubs on campus. So if there's not already something out there that you're interested in, you can actually make your own club, which is amazing. Um, we also have a number of volunteer and work study opportunities for our students. So you can work an on campus job or volunteer in our research labs um, or anything in between. And just one example of a campus job is Campus Ambassador, which is what me and Jade are. And I might be a little biased, but I think it's the best job you could find on campus. Um, and also because Berkeley is in the epicenter of the Bay Area, there's so many opportunities for internships, both in the cities of San Francisco and in the area of Silicon Valley. Um, and even beyond, like Jade mentioned earlier, Berkeley really is a global university. So we have connections basically anywhere you could find. Uh, we also have a number of study abroad opportunities for our students on basically every single continent um, and there's so much to explore with that however if you love the Bay Area so much that you would never want to leave um, which is very understandable because there is so much to do in the Bay Area we have a number of great hiking trails like you can see up there in the top right um, you can travel into San Francisco and spend the day with your friends. Um, just so much to do in and around Berkeley, and it's basically impossible to get bored here. I definitely agree with Sydney. There's a lot of activities that Berkeley students can be involved in, and you will really never get bored here. 
Now with uh, remote learning and the closed campus, we still want to build our community through social media networks. So we have our Bear Talk blog where our campus ambassadors share parts of their Berkeley life with the public. And our clubs are also adapting very quickly to online operation and they're doing recruitment and meetings online right now. Different departments also host these webinars for professional and personal development. They often have these guest speakers to talk about the newest developments either in the field or if they, they can talk about future career advice as well. Lastly, we have the Golden Bear Orientation, which is for incoming freshmen and it's a program that helps them with advising and help them to make new friends when they first come to campus. Thanks so much, Jade. And now we're just going to quickly talk about our athletics here at Berkeley. So we have three levels of competition. So our Division One sports are our more um, competitive or athletics here. But if you're interested in just having some fun and getting together with a group of friends, you could participate in a club or intramural sport. Um, I know it's group of girls that got together and just formed an intramural frisbee team they play once a week so definitely possible to have low commitment with that and we have a number of different athletic centers here uh, so we have the california memorial stadium which is where a lot of our athletes both study and train and we also have the Haas pavilion where you can go and see a number of basketball or gymnastics games and it's always really fun to go to those um, we also have the recreational sports facility, which is open to all students, so you can go there and work out or take Zumba classes. Um, and a lot of the classes offered through that facility are have transitioned to online, uh, so you can find those on their website. And Berkeley actually has earned 207 Olympic medals through our athletics programs, which is really amazing as well. Awesome, and next we'll talk about libraries and research. So we have 24 official libraries on campus and they are holding over 13 million volumes of books. So that's a lot of books. Basically any book I ever wanted to read here at Berkeley, I can find them in one of our libraries. Other than the physical copies of the books, we also have a very extensive online resources, which online resource database, which comes very handy in this time. So on these database, you can basically find all the academic article and acad academic journal article that you're looking for for your research. And talking about research, I think research is a very great opportunity to have hands-on experience and to possibly explore future career choices. We have a great research program here called Undergraduate Research Apprentice Program, or known as URAP, which undergraduate students can apply to every semester in order to get into these research teams and do conduct research in many different fields, not just biological science, but also social sciences, engineering projects, and public health projects, which is super relevant to our time right now. And in the department, they also have different kinds of opportunities and you can definitely get research opportunities from your professors as well. Just to finally wrap up, here's some campus highlights to really showcase what it's like to live and be a student in Berkeley. Um, there's a squirrel on the top right, which is kind of our unofficial campus mascot. There's also some of the most beautiful nature and sites you will find in and around Berkeley. I know the fire trails are right behind Berkeley's campus. And I try to go up there at least three times a week to catch some of these incredible sunsets uh, like you can see in that photo there. And Berkeley is really just surrounded by so much nature, um, but we also have the city aspect of it. So really any environment you're looking for, you can definitely find at our campus. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Now we're going to be moving on to the Q&A portion, uh, starting with our first question for Sydney. And one of our attendees is interested in majoring in political science, just like you, but they would also like to minor in something. So do you have any opinions on what some realistic minors are for political science students? And just more broadly, uh, how do you manage your time as a political science student? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's a great question. I'm so glad you're interested in political science. Um, I think poli-sci is a really interdisciplinary major, so it really goes well with a lot of minors. Um, that's why I decided to take on both public policy and journalism. 
Um, public policy specifically is a really popular minor for a lot of political science majors, uh, just because it teaches you more the policy side, while political science is more focused on the theoretical aspect of politics. Um, so that's a really good pairing. I know a lot of students also might choose to minor in economics um, or just really depending on what your interests in, I think. Um, I wanted to do journalism because I really like writing and wanted to incorporate that into my political science um, endeavors and so I think it's really just up to you and they don't even necessarily have to fit exactly with political science if there's something you're really interested in pursuing um, such as like a musical theater minor or really anything like that if something's at Berkeley that you want to take classes in and study in I would definitely recommend going for it we have amazing classes and basically um, every single field you could think of. Um, but I think as a political science student, uh, you're offered so many amazing classes and it's really easy to start taking upper division classes pretty early on. Um, so I really recommend also looking at their website, seeing what classes or concentrations you might be interested in. And there's also a lot of really great research going on um, in the political science field. I'm doing some research right now about the 2020 election. Um, so just definitely get involved and put yourself out there and hopefully you will love the major. That's some wonderful advice. I too am a political science major so I can echo everything that she said and the minor you take doesn't have, if you're interested in a minor, it doesn't have to be in the realm of political science. It can be anything you would like. I have a friend who is minoring in English and another who is doing something more economics and business related, someone who's even doing something related to biology. So it doesn't really matter what your major is for when you choose your minor, just that you're passionate about it and you're interested in it. And some people like myself may start out thinking, oh, I want to minor in something. And then they figure out, hey, you know, I actually want to double major because I love it so much, which is what happened in my case. So now we're going to be moving on to a question for Jade. And someone asked, with so many people in classes, is it hard to get contact uh, with professors and to build relationships with them? Yeah, that's a great question because as we mentioned before, some of the classes can be really big. Uh, hard is definitely not the word I would use to describe the, the situation, um, but it is it's something that you have to reach out to your professor. Your professor is not going to contact you and say, hey, you know, let's get to know each other. Um, but it's very easy to get to know your professors if you wanted to. Example I always like to use is I had a psychology class and the professor is kind of a big figure in the field and he created this um, personality scale which a lot of the psychology research all use. So when I found that out, I was like, oh, this is so cool. This professor is such a big figure. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm very intimidated. But then I go into the class and two weeks in, he's in class and basically pleading for us to come to his office hours. He's like, I'm sitting in my office, I'm so bored, and I really wanna hear from all of you guys. I wanna hear about your future plans. I wanna hear about what you're interested in in psychology. So for me, that was a, that's very important reason why I like it at Cal. Professors really care about our voices and they really want to hear from us. So that means it's not hard at all to get in contact with them because they really want to talk to students as well. And like I've said before, as you move to the upper division classes, which is more focused in your field, the class do get a lot smaller. So I'm a junior this year and I feel like my classes got significantly smaller and it felt way more personal. So that makes it way easier to get in touch with your professor in your interested field as well. I couldn't agree more. Professors are more accessible than you think they are. It's just really getting up the courage to go to office hours and talk to them. Or as Jade mentioned, when you do upper divs, they are smaller, but they also afford the opportunities to do upper division seminars with professors that you're really interested in. So for example, this semester, I'm taking a seminar with a professor that I've read his textbooks and all of his work before I even knew he was going to be my professor. And it's just a thrill. Of the two weeks that I've had him so far have been incredible. I'm excited for more. Our next question is for Sydney and someone asks, are freshmen able to get research opportunities and how common is it for students across the board to be able to participate in research? 
Yeah, totally. That's a great question. Um, honestly, I think it's way easier to find research opportunities than a lot of students think. Um, a lot of it is really just going out and seeking those research opportunities for yourself. I know some students that have gone into their professor's office hours and they just start asking them about their work and they're like, do you have any open spots for me to maybe work with you? And most of the time the teachers will say, yes, please, I have been looking for somebody. Please come join my team. Um, and we also have a great resource called URAP, which Jade mentioned earlier, um, but that's the undergraduate research apprenticeship program. Um, so graduates and professors will oftentimes post a lot of their research projects on there and you don't have have to be involved in that certain field to even do research for them. Um, actually, our most popular research subject is history, which is one of Morgan's majors. Um, but I personally got involved with XLab my freshman year, which is um, a social sciences research facility here on campus. And I just emailed one of the per or, um, one of the directors of the program and I was like, do you guys have any open spots? And the guy was basically pleading me to do work for him. Um, so I think it's a lot more accessible than students realize. And there's really research opportunities all across the board and in all different subjects, which is really great. One of the things I love about campus is the ability for all students, no matter their major, is to conduct research. And even if you don't feel like you have a time in your schedule, some classes and some majors even require some research components. So as history is very important to research at Cal, almost all of my history classes have had some sort of research component to them. So even if you can't get into that, if you don't have enough time in your schedule, you can always find other ways. So we are wrapping up our presentation today. We just have a few minutes left. So I have a question for the both of you, and that is why Berkeley? Why did you choose Berkeley? What is your Berkeley story? So we'll start with Jade and then go to Sydney. Yeah, I can share my Berkeley story for sure. So I'll be very honest and say that when I was choosing a college, I wasn't doing a lot of research. I, when I chose Berkeley, it wasn't a very well-researched um, decision because I, I went on a tour when I was a sophomore in high school and I really liked the campus. I was on the East Coast and I said, I want to go to the West Coast. I want to see the other side of the country. So I was like, why not? I've seen Berkeley. Let's go to Berkeley. Um, but coming here, it was a little bit intimidating at first because I was the only one from my high school that came to here. I didn't know anyone. Um, so I was a little nervous about finding a community here in the beginning. But I quickly found that Berkeley really tried to provide all the resources that you need to succeed here. And uh, I remember going into one of my first lectures and there's this uh, PhD physics professor and I'm sitting in his class and uh, he really reminded me of my high school physics teacher, which was my favorite teacher back in high school. So I decided to email him about it. I said, hey, you know, you remind me of this teacher. I'm really excited for your class, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he responded to me and he said, oh, I'm excited to have you in my class. And uh, it was very um, reassuring to me at the moment that professors care so much. Like even if a freshman sent them a small email like that, they really care. And that goes not only to uh, the professor, that goes to the GSS as well. And I think that really just goes into a bigger narrative of Berkeley really care. So professors and GSIs really care about our learning progress and our students really care about making a difference in the world. And uh, our school really care about preserving everyone's diversity and making sure everyone feels supported in this community. So for me, that is very inspiring environment that motivates me to become a better version of myself every day. Just hanging around these people, hanging around these friends and these professors. So I maybe when I came here, it wasn't well thought out, but I think I definitely it's a very well informed decision that I chose to stay here because this community really do make me feel like at home. Yeah, Jade, that was so well said. <laughs> um, and I honestly had a similar kind of start to being a student at Berkeley. I'm from the Bay Area. Um, I live about 30 minutes from Berkeley. So I never really considered going to school so close to home just because I'd always had this image of college as something that is, you know, far out there in a different land in a different area. Um, so I just kind of clicked the box on the UC application, not really thinking much of it. I know that Berkeley is a extremely amazing 
um, academic school and I never thought that I would even get in in the first place. Um, I was very in shock when I found out that I did and I was at first a little bit intimidated to go just because I thought that I had heard these rumors about Berkeley being a super competitive environment and I thought I would just be drowned in work all four years and not really have the chance to you know experience college um, but I just was kind of thinking about it and I thought that if there's a school like Berkeley that attracts such brilliant people People, that's an environment that I wanted to be a part of because I knew that that would push me so much to be not only a better student but a better person and I would be able to continually learn from the people around me every single day and on the first day of move-in I fell down two flights of stairs trying to carry my suitcase um, just because I'm five foot one and do not have arm strength um, and immediately like 15 people rushed to my attention and offered to help and we immediately just started talking and forming study groups and everything like that and by the very first day I realized that I have nothing to be afraid of here the people are so nice and they only just want to help you succeed and watch you succeed and I think it's a really incredible opportunity just to be in an environment where you are pushed in such an academic way but also you have so many opportunities to grow yourself as a person you can get involved in so many different clubs and opportunities there are so many facets to Berkeley that com like comprise what it is besides the academics um, and I think that I don't think at any other school I would have grown as much as a person as I have so far. So I am so lucky to go to school here and I hope you choose to too. Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful and inspiring Berkeley stories. You both just filled me with so much joy. This is the end of our presentation today, but if you'd like to follow up with us, contact us, please follow us on social media at Visit UC Berkeley. If you have any lingering questions or any of your questions didn't get answered, please email us at tourberkeley.edu. We also have a blog, so if you want to hear what it's actually like to be a Berkeley student from people just like us, you can go ahead and visit our blog. This was recorded, but different versions of our virtual visits have been recorded and are available on our YouTube channel as well as our website if you'd like to check them out. If you'd like to find the resources that Berkeley is providing its students during COVID-19, please check out the link right there. And if you want to find out more about our 150 years of women's celebration that was mentioned earlier in this presentation, go ahead and follow that link there. And if you want to learn more about admissions information specifically, you can go ahead and check out that link. And if you'd like to join any of our other virtual visits, whether they be the student panels or the engineering specific visits, go ahead and check out that link right there. We are so glad that you joined us today and we're gonna end this tour with a Go Bears on three. One, two, three, Go Bears! <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your day.